This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. How local churches are handling the Lenten season during the pandemic, that story and more next. Hi everyone and thank you for being with us. I'm Ken Cara and let's get to today's local information. Luzerne County District Attorney Stephanie Salavantis is running for Luzerne County Judge. Salavantis will resign as District Attorney once the petition process is finished. Petitions from candidates must be filed by March 9th. Salavantis has been the Luzerne County District Attorney for three terms and her current term runs until the end of January 2024. District Judge Alexandra Kokura Kravitz and Attorney Laura Dennis have also announced they will be running for county judge. Every week, our Samuel Sand Jr. records a Catholic Mass that you can view on SSPTV and at SSPTV.com. This week, he asked the priest celebrating Mass a few questions about Lent during the pandemic. So how have you guys been handling the Mass and the Stations of the Cross during Lent? Okay, just to mention that with this pandemic, we've had to do everything a little bit differently. Uh, last year we had, we celebrated Ash Wednesday. We had the first Friday with our stations and then the pandemic hit and everything changed. So what we're doing now is it was organized by the deanery. Father Pecola is the dean of the uh, Lower Luzerne deanery, the, this area here, and he gathered all the deacons from each of the parishes and had two video series put together. We had a guest priest to do Road to Resurrection, and Father Paul McDonald, who is an oblate of St. Joseph priest, came down and with a limited number of people at St. Joseph's, St. Cyril Methodius Church, that they did the filming four series for masses with extended homilies, and it's meant to be a, a type of retreat that can be taken, and they've all been posted now, or they will be posted in the first week of, of Lent, beginning Monday, Monday through Thursday, with each day new one being posted, and then they will stay on uh, the website for all of our deanery parishes for the remainder of the Lenten season, so people can go back to it, or if they haven't had a chance. Um, all the parish websites throughout the deanery will be linked back to St. Cyril Methodius website, so there'll be a link on Holy the Rosary website as well as the other parishes within the diocese, they'll have that. And then Father Pacola is one who actually will have that posted on his website and we simply have the link. So if they go to any website, even YouTube and Facebook and things like that, they should be able to find it if they go to St. Cyril Methodius or uh, Holy Rosary or as I mentioned, any of the other deanery parishes. Can you give some advice to Catholics going through Lent during the pandemic? Right, so now things are limited, so it's a good question because how do we do that? I've had people still not comfortable with coming back to Mass yet uh, because it is a gathering of, of multiple people. And uh, I said if you have any reason, to, if you're uncomfortable at all for whatever reason, to then use the resources available online. And, and it does make a big difference. So uh, you still get to participate. But there are times that we open the church um, every day throughout the week for two hours of individual prayer. So we have somebody to greet them at the door. The church is sanitized immediately before, immediately after. So we do those things. And there are chapels throughout uh, the deanery. I know here at Holy Rosary, we have a chapel that we sanitize and, and all the rest. So people come and go. And, and we ask people to continue to, to use the sand hand sanitizers themselves. We have it at the entrance way, um, also to the wear masks and, and keep six feet apart. So we have all those things posted and listed. How has the pandemic affected this, the church financially and spiritually for people? Uh, so the financial part of it, there, it's give and take, so you can't count it on, on a regular basis, but it usually will come in then later. Uh, people will write a check for a six month time frame or a year or whatever it might be. So that's a little bit different. And we have a drop slot so people can conveniently come anytime and just drop that through there. And uh, uh, But we have other ways of doing that too. So uh, we're trying to always watch that and, and keep contributions safe and secure and all the rest. And uh, But as far as people coming to church, the numbers are lower. But when the people come, they still are happy to have the opportunity with all the safeguards in place. Today's news feature is brought to you by The Cheese Store and more. Come in and order a tray of their mini cannolis. And don't forget to check out their Facebook page for weekly specials. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. 
Here's our weekend forecast from the National Weather Service on Saturday. It's partly sunny with a high in the 20s. Saturday night, partly cloudy with a low around 10 degrees. Sunday is mostly sunny with a high near 30 degrees. Sunday night, mostly cloudy with a low around 20 degrees. Monday, we have a chance of rain and snow. It will be cloudy with a high near 35 degrees. Monday night, mostly cloudy with a low in the 20s. And then on Tuesday, it's mostly cloudy with a high in the 30s. Heading into the final week of the regular season, the Hazleton Area High School boys swimming team is still unbeaten. The Cougars swept Wyoming Seminary and Dallas in a virtual meet. Ryan Kavalik won the 200 and 500 freestyle against Wyoming Seminary and Dallas. Tony Goldstone won the 200 IM and 100 butterfly against Dallas. You'll hear from both athletes later in our in-depth sports feature. The Lady Cougars were swept in swimming action. In local girls basketball, North Schuylkill beat Tamaqua with Sarah Wagner scoring 17 points. The Lady Spartans are tied with Jim the work for first place in Division I of the Schuylkill League. League playoffs are next week. Marion was paced by Frankie Martinelli's nine points in their win over Shenandoah Valley. In boys basketball, Shenandoah Valley lost two games recently and Monoy area lost a close non-league game to Southern Columbia. One more note, the District 2 AAA Wrestling Championships that will include wrestlers from the Hazleton Area High School is set for Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Mohegan Sun Arena. There is a limited supply of tickets being sold by the Hazleton Area School District. Well, I could use some fresh air, so let's head outside with the standard speakers, Kent Jackson. A flock of birds that I noticed rising from the stubble of a cornfield were crows, unsurprisingly. Crows are the second most common bird in Pennsylvania after robins, and in winter they roost and feed together. Massing together gives crows a better chance of finding huge granaries like the cornfield in Sugarloaf Township, even if they have to share the bounty. They live perhaps as long as 20 years and even longer in captivity, so one and two year olds often stay with their parents and help nurture hatchlings. They're smart. They solve puzzles, as in Aesop's Fable, presented with a glass containing a little water that they couldn't reach at the bottom. Crows plopped stones over the lip until the water rose to the level they could reach. In one experiment, when people bartered with them, crows traded more with the folks who gave them better items. People easily identify crows by their caw caw calls, but crows can mimic calls of other birds, and they warn the flock of dangers such as the presence of people with whom they've had bad experiences. Yes, they recognize our faces. One researcher at the University of Washington who roused the ire of the flock when netting and banding crows started wearing the mask of a politician. Crows accosted him whenever he wore the mask around campus. Thank you very much for that, Kent. Coming up, that story that I mentioned about the Hazleton Area High School boys and girls swim teams, plus a clip from one of our religious shows in the SSP TV Spotlight. And we can get a lot of things delivered right now, including an Easter egg hunt. Janine Lassant gets the details from the Miss Greater Hazleton Scholarship Organization next. The Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce is hosting a year-long Life Skills for Young Women series. For more information on the series, you can visit hazeltonchamber.org. SSP TV News would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Nelson Griesling, age 81, of Ringtown, the Stafford Brunswick Funeral Home, is assisting the family. And Carl S. DeBinger, age 102, of West Hazleton, services will be private under the Hillary J. Bonin Funeral Home. Today's social and obituary report is brought to you by Harmon Funeral Homes and Crematory. Call 570 788 0977 or go to harmonfuneral.com.